Thank you all for making the trip, bringing your expertise to our collective audiences today who are our students, our faculty, our university president, college deans, educational specialists, and a really impressive gathering of executives leading the retail industry. We're delighted to have you here as we head into another inspiring and yet, I think, thoughtful look at the retail industry today. We at the university thrive in an environment of learning, and you're not going to be disappointed if you subscribe to the same today. Our theme, customer engagement, is so important to the industry now. So you've got right here the must-have hot ticket for insiders. And as you know, there shouldn't be any average day in retail. That's not what you want. And these couple days will be anything but average. So to hear, we're also here today to uh, thanks to our special sponsors. You'll see them recognized around the venue. We really thank them for bringing uh, their expertise and also their uh, support to the program and to this beautiful setting. I hope you all enjoy it. So I have a couple wishes in, in today. It's enjoy your day, engage in, in each other's perspective, and thank you for the connection to the Lundgren Center, uh, where the future faces of retail are really anticipating their careers amongst you all. So in order to get the ball rolling today, I'll be short, but it's now it's my distinct pleasure to turn the program over to Dr. Eugene Sander, the president of the University of Arizona. Well, thank you, Martha, and thank you all for being here. I, uh, I feel a little bit strange at this retailing con uh, conference being introduced as the president of the University of Arizona. While it's true, I feel more like when I'm out here as the former dean of the College of Ag and Life Sciences, which is where the Norton School and the Lundgren Center uh, are essentially located. And I would say to you, uh, thank you all for being here. Just like Martha said, we'd like to think that if you're in retailing, then in the middle of April, Tucson, Arizona is the place to be. And we hope that this conference uh, will essentially not disappoint you in terms of all of the inside stuff that you're going to get in terms of your very dynamic uh, industry. Uh, my job this morning, uh, besides saying hello, and I've got that said, is to introduce uh, Mr. Terry Lundgren, the CEO of Macy's. I've introduced Terry a number of times at these events. It goes all the way from reminding uh, him that he was once known as the most famous oyster shucker in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, I don't need to tell you about the fact that this man is probably the leader, the nation's leader, in the retailing industry. We think of Terry in another way, in that he also has been a leader in terms of retailing education. His founding is allowing us to use his name to be associated with the Lundgren Center for Retailing has allowed us our, in our quest to become the foremost place for retailing education, if not only in the nation, but also in the world. Terry is a graduate of the University of Arizona, 1975. I've known him for well over a decade, he and his wife Tina as well. He's been a great supporter of our institution and a great supporter of the retailing program here, and without a doubt, one of the true leaders of the retailing industry in the United States. So help me welcome Mr. Terry Lundgren. Terry? Thank you, sir. Thank you President Sander. And indeed, we have a long uh, relationship together uh, here on campus. In fact, when, um, when I gave the commencement speech here, uh, several years ago, my parents were here, who are no, no longer alive, and, and, um, and they were here, and, and uh, my, uh, after my speech, and I, I swear it had nothing to do with my speech, my mother had a, uh, had a medical emergency, not related to my speech, uh, and, and uh, Dean Sander hopped into action like you've, uh, you couldn't imagine. And, um, you know, one of the best medical facilities uh, in the Southwest is right here at the University of Arizona. And uh, the care uh, and, uh, uh, that, that was shown to my, to my mother at that, that time just, just connected us, like, in a way that just goes beyond uh, a normal connection. So we have a long and fantastic relationship and proud to uh, uh, to be associated with him now in this position as president of the university. And thank you, Martha, um, who's new and 
her position uh, as the, the head of the Lundgren Center, and, and she has just been a ball of fire in a very short period of time, making her mark, and you all need to get to know her. You probably will, because she'll get to know you, but you should take the initiative yourself. She's a, just an outstanding leader, and uh, we're delighted to, to, to have her as uh, the head of, our, head of our center. So you're going to have a, a great couple of days. We've got a terrific lineup um, of, of speakers today and tomorrow. Uh, we, we're covering all of the bases. Uh, we have uh, resellers, we have manufacturers, we have wholesalers, we have uh, motivational uh, speakers, we, we have uh, consultants, we have technology experts, we have a broad range uh, of individuals who can help us understand where this industry is headed and where the opportunities uh, uh, exist uh, and, and hopefully how we're uh, going to capture them. So let me talk a little bit about uh, Macy's and uh, Macy's what's going on. Obviously our company is Macy's Inc. which is Macy's and Bloomingdale's um, but I'm going to focus today on on the 90% of our business, which is the, the, the Macy's brand, just because of the pu pure uh, number, of, number of stores and, and size of the, the, the business and the, and the earnings. I am, um, well, I, well, I have a, a number of titles, including chairman and president and CEO. Uh, my, the, the title on, on the door of my office is uh, Terry Lundgren, Chief Customer Officer. And I, and I don't just remind myself of that, I remind everyone uh, who visits me every, every day that it is my job to put the customer at the center of uh, all of our decisions and we really do indeed uh, try to accomplish uh, just that. Um, just can't talk to you about, um, about the stuff we're doing and make it interesting unless I can tell you that it's working and so just to show you that it's working, here's some results. Um, for last year, uh, we were up 5.3 on same store sales, which is well in excess of a billion dollars of, of, uh, of organic sales growth uh, last year for, for our company, taking us to about 26.5 billion in sales last year. Um, and then Nordstrom's and Saks, you can see the luxury market did very well. Our own Bloomingdale's would be right over there on that, that uh, far right side of this, this screen here, both screens, and um, uh, did a great job. Uh, but for us to move the Macy's uh, business on our size of a business to the degree that we had, and that was on top of a 4.6% same store sale increase in 2010, was really encouraging. And I think that some of the stores that were a little weaker, you know, had a, had a challenging consumer. You know, the consumer who was choosing between higher gas prices and, and higher food costs and all of these things was challenged and making decisions. And I think that's what's happening today. Luxury, I think, is doing fine and will continue to do fine. But I think in the, in the middle and the, in the, in the lower end markets, I think the customers are choosing. And you're going to have to fight for market share uh, to win in, in, in those places. And the next is, uh, is a gap analysis. Uh, not the gap stores, but you know the gap between uh, different retailers, and um, and this is uh, this is the red line is is our own company against our, our competitors. And while we were up five three uh, same store sales for the for the year, uh, the fourth quarter was up five two, and while that was weaker than the first and and second quarter in, in actual uh, uh, growth rate, uh, the it was a huge uh, gap against the field and that was really uh, important for us is to, to win in the fourth quarter uh, and to have a 430 basis point spread uh, in the, in, against the field in the, in, the, in the fourth quarter. So we felt like we were really on, on track and, and the growth continues. February and March um, continue to perform very, very well. Uh, so the strategies that we've been putting in place have been working and you know like Many, many companies in this room, you, know, you can't sit still on good performance. I always worry about that, in fact. I, always, I worry more when we're performing well than when I'm perform we're, not, we're not performing. Because when we're, if we're not performing, throw it all out. You know, change it. It doesn't matter. You know, see, see what you can do and see what sticks. But when you're doing well, in order to stay there, you know that, that other, uh, others are watching what you're doing and they're going to try to emulate some of those things. So you have to just continue to move forward and continue to change and continue to grow in order to stay out in front. And so that's, that's, that's kind of what we're going to um, talk about a little bit uh, here today. So um, the acronym we use in our company when you say, well, why do you think we're growing so well? Why do you think the company's performing as well as it is? 
The answer is mom. Not the mom I spoke about a few minutes ago, uh, but the, the, the three letters stand for uh, My Macy's Omni Channel uh, and Magic Selling. When we do just that, when we, when we, when we, when we do everything, you know, it's when, that's when we really begin to, uh, to bring alive the, the My Macy's philosophy. My Macy's, for, for those of you who haven't you know, uh, heard us talk about this subject, means that whenever you, when you walk into the store in the Tucson Mall here versus walking into the store in, 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 uh, in South Coast Plaza in Orange, Orange County or, or in Denver, Colorado, you would embrace this store as having assortments that relate to you. You know, this is my Macy's because you understand that my lifestyle in Chicago is different than the lifestyle in Miami Beach. And so, so this localization of product has been a major part of what has made uh, our, our, our story complete and, and work. And so when we talk about uh, My Macy's, it really is about doing all of the little details that, only, that you can only do if you, if you are listening to the customer on a local level. And so, you know, I, I believe when we had big divisions and we were running, you know, trying to run the country even in regions of 100 stores, 150 stores, 200 stores, that we were losing touch with the, the customers in the outlying areas, that we really didn't know the best sales associate in our stores. We really didn't know the top department managers in our stores. And so how could we know the customer in those stores? And so the localization, is, which is an entirely different structure that has between you know, about approximately 18 people in 69 cities around the country that are former buyers and former planning executives, they are guiding our beliefs of what is required in those local markets. They are guiding our merchants, our buyers in New York, about what we need in Tucson, which is different than what we need in Minneapolis. And that is a big difference. And that, in fact, is what's really making it go and really making it work uh, on, that, on that initiative. And, um, you know, we, while, while we are, you know, the, the advantage of having a central buying organization, which most every company retailer here has, uh, is great because we're the largest seller of Ralph Lauren, the largest seller of Michael Kors, largest seller of on and on and on. That's great because that gives us a lot of negotiation ability in the, in the, in the workroom with them. But if you can't make those products locally relevant, then it doesn't really matter. You know, if you don't have the right size, you know, in Calvin Klein, in the store that that customer is coming in, it doesn't matter. If you're, if you're only selling black and they're selling you know, lighter uh, shades in, in the Arizona market, it doesn't matter. You know, so that, that local relevance becomes really critical, but the combination of strength of buy uh, with the local taste is, uh, is, a, is a, I think, a really magic formula. The omni-channel is about being everywhere, and today the customer is everywhere, and the customer is shopping differently. The customer, as you know, is, is not just single-dimensioned and, and just walking into stores and walking out. The customer is, uh, is not just shopping online. The customer is doing all of these things and shopping with her mobile device, shopping at her desk, shopping while she's working for you and me. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and also, of course, still the large percentage of the business is still walking into the stores and, and actually trying on product and, and holding up the dress to the shoes, to the bag, and, and making, making it all, you know, feeling the fabrics and all, all of that. But that, the, 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 the dynamics are such that, so that the consumer's not locked to one way of shopping any longer. She and he are an omni-channel consumer, uh, and that consumer who shops multiple channels is by far our best consumer. That's, the way, that's when you build loyalty with the consumer when the consumer is shopping you multiple ways. And so embracing the be everywhere is, is really important. Um, uh, Peter and Peter Soxie and Casey are going to talk about that in a minute, so I'm not going to focus on that, that subject. They're going to give a fantastic presentation uh, about uh, all of the things that are happening in this space today and what the future might be uh, was when you look at the, this omni-channel consumer. Magic selling um, is just never fail to astonish the customer. You know, easier said than done. Um, and then, frankly, I say this to our internal organization all the time. You know, we have 170,000 employees, 130,000 of such interface with the customer. So that is where it really all happens. And, and you know, we can have the best product, but if there's a bad interaction, you know, then again, we failed. And so this is where we have to go above and beyond. Uh, and, and, and teaching and training and getting, getting a, an organization to change the culture to focus on the selling and engagement with, with our consumer to a higher degree than we had in the past 
is a, is a, is a process. It's not, it's not just a moment in time. And, and it costs money. Because in order to do it and do it effectively, you have to spend money to not just organize the training, but you have to, to take them off the selling floor, and you're talking about 130,000 people, and take them off the floor for days to train them, to engage them, to, to give them the, the tools they need to be successful at their job. And so, and so that it was, a, was a big investment on our part, one. And two is I knew it wouldn't be a one-time investment. It had to be a multiple-year commitment that we would stay uh, on this subject of getting our associates focused on the selling and engaging with, with, with our customers. So that's, that was a very, very big deal, which we began a year ago. And you can just watch the net promoter scores rise. You know, you can just see that it's connecting the dots and it's happening. It's working. Uh, and so, so we feel really good about this particular uh, uh, subject and the progress that we're making because I know what an investment it is and I know you have to change cultures and I know you have to have to have a, uh, change the job description of your selling managers, which we did. And by having the district teams that I described earlier who are focused on the product itself in those markets, that's taken away that responsibility from the selling managers so they can now devote full time to coaching and assisting and training the associates and giving them immediate feedback about how they're performing on the selling and engagement uh, subject. So big progress being made on that subject, and, uh, uh, but a tremendous amount of work in order to, uh, to, to, to get us there. Uh, and by the way, the magic, you know, is, is so you hear about the magic of Macy's, so that's why we attached it to uh, magic selling, but it's about uh, the Amazon uh, meet and make a connection first with the, uh, with the customer, and the, the A is asking questions, you know, getting into the, uh, what are you looking for? How can I be of assistance? And really trying to listen, and active listening by, with the customer as opposed to just assuming you know what, the, what this customer wants. And then giving the options, okay, I understand what you want here, let me give you some ideas and, and share back and forth with how we might solve uh, for your request. And then, you know, inspire to, to buy and then celebrate uh, the actual purchase it, itself, you know, it, because assuming you're, you're in the process and so you as an associate feel good about that uh, decision that that consumer has made and then celebrating that, uh, that together that, that, about that, uh, that, that decision. So now I'm going to talk about another M besides mom uh, and that is where we're going to go uh, next. And I think we, in our case, have a big opportunity with the millennial uh, consumer. This is the consumer. There, we break it into two groups, but the, but the age range is 13 to 30 years old. Obviously, this is a very large pocket uh, of, of the population. And in fact, this will be the, the, the single biggest purchasing group for products that we sell uh, bigger than the baby boomers, like instantaneously, this is happening. And so we have to all connect with this, uh, this younger consumer. You know, every one of our companies have this generation working for us. And I always find that, that you know, you can go out and, you know, get research and use consultants and the like, and a lot of times that's helpful. But asking your own employees who are living this lifestyle is one of the greatest opportunities that we all have to learn who this uh, customer really is and, and how we can satisfy their needs. They're 70 million strong. They're spending $65 billion today on products, again, that we, uh, that, that we sell. We must uh, be, be the place of choice for this consumer, and it's going to require, as you just have, have watched, doing things a little differently than we would do to attract guys like me uh, into, the, in, into the store. So. Um, um, engaging this consumer is, is, uh, is something that we're all very, very focused on at, at our company. I think we've done some very good things, but we have a long way to go. As I said, we're breaking it into two groups, this 13 to 21-year-old and then the older, the older group, 22 to 30-year-old group, uh, and, the, and the, the, we're breaking it into two, two places to shop. Within our, within our stores, um, the M Style Lab being aimed at the, uh, the younger uh, demographic and the impulse uh, uh, category being focused on this, this, uh, this, this next lifestyle. And, you, and you have, of course you have to you know, think about it in those terms because how one would dress you know, as a kid up through high school and even in, during, during college is going to be extremely different from the day they graduate and they're into the workforce. And then they're getting into their late 20s, they're talking about perhaps 
of getting married, possibly even in the, up to their 30s, they're, now they're thinking about families. You know, now they're buying, thinking about buying for the home. So the, the changes are rather dramatic in this, uh, in this time frame of 13 to 30. Uh, so we, in our case, we've decided to break it into two and think of them uh, that, that way. So we are sp being more specific about how we're uh, communicating with them. And then targeting the, the, the lifestyles, you know, we're, we're, there, there's a girl next door, there's, a, there's, an, there's an authentic uh, consumer. So we, 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 we're, we're not only looking at them just as, as age groups, we're doing the exact same thing that has been so successful for us with localization of my Macy's, and that is we're breaking them down within their age groups into lifestyles. Uh, and boys, uh, or boys, young men, girls, young women. Uh, and into, into different li lifestyles. So that in a store like, again, Tucson, Arizona, outdoors, college oriented, there would be one focus. Uh, and then if you were in New York City, it would be a very different focus in a more urban environment for this young consumer. And you have to localize these ideas as well. We think we have a leg up on, on this with our structure, with the My Macy's organization uh, that, that can help us get better at this. Uh, but this, to, 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 to me, is, is the, where the, the, the gold is in, in getting that connection with this young consumer. And it's, again, becoming really relevant to individuals, not just age groups. And, and that's, uh, that's going to be key for, for all of us. So localizing the assortments um, is really, again, it's what My Macy's does already. Now we're just simply going to break this down uh, to, to, these, uh, to these younger consumers. So let me just kind of do a little test here and ask you all a question. So pull out your cell phones, uh, and, uh, and we're going to ask you to text an answer here. Uh, so the question is, and I, by the way, you can see I'm breaking this into two groups, because I want to know your answer if you're under 30, and I want to know your answer if you're over 30. And the question is, which one of the following apps or services is not music related. So the first thing you need to do is text 22333. And then your answer, if you're under 30, look to the left side. Is it Shazam? Is it Square? Is it Spotify? Is it SoundCloud? Which one of these is not music related? And then text your answer. And obviously to the right side, you'll text your answer if you are 30 or over. So there you go. I can't wait to hear what these answers are. <laughs> well, here we go. It's not done yet. I can't believe you all got this wrong. It's unbelievable. <laughs> nah, yeah, I can't not influence you. Come on. Okay, is that enough time? I think so. You basically all got it right. Uh, so it's uh, square is the is is the answer. Um, you've got. Um, I know that the the, the the I know the the. The, the first one, Shazam, that's the one where you just simply, you know, you, 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 walk, you can just literally connect uh, and, and li listen to music that's in the room uh, or on your television or, or, or on, a, on a, a CD or something, and you can, you can find out the, what the song is and you can actually record it on your, on, on your device. And uh, um, uh, Spotify is, is Facebook's most popular uh, music app, and... Uh, and the sound, SoundCloud is just a series of various different sounds. Someone said this was an easy one just by the names. I said I agree. When, I, when we put this up, I thought that, you know, well, Square just doesn't sound like uh, a music app. And so if those of you who are just guessing, I think, could, could do a pretty good job of that. But the point was trying to see if there was a difference. Um, there, we probably could have made it harder and found a bigger difference between the under 30 and the over 30. But I would argue that all of us, need to accept the fact that we are, we, we are experts at what we do and we are experts in our field, but we do not, we, we do not and cannot really understand how someone, under, someone my age could really understand how someone under 30 might react or respond to, uh, to, to a situation, to product, to an environment. 
like they would. We have, to, we have to learn from them, accept their ideas, and, and re recognize the fact that we do not have all of the answers. And just because we have a lot of experience in our field, we do not completely understand how this younger consumer would, would shop. That's the first step, step in order to get these things right, is to assume that you do not have, have all the answers about how this customer wants to shop, uh, shop with you. All right, and so then the next is in how are we going to reach this customer? Because I would again say that how we communicate with this millennial customer is going to be different than how one might communicate with my generation. We have to be prepared to respond differently in order to create the, the, what we're trying to create, which is the place of choice for this millennial consumer. Obviously, communicating with them with multiple collaborations that we have with uh, the social uh, media options because they don't just, it's not just Facebook. It, it isn't just one option. You heard, you know, Pinterest as being, as being one of this gentleman who was talking about uh, earlier as, as his, uh, his, his, uh, his place of, of choice. But everybody has their place of choice, and we, we have our own apps as well that we're creating, and we're creating sitelets on Macy's.com again just to draw in this this younger consumer making it feel more like their Macy's uh, with, with how we're responding to them. Uh, and and in, in order to get all this done, we're actually changing the organization structure. So while we have a structure of, of central merchants and central planning executives and central marketing executives and, se and central uh, uh, private brand executives, you know, and they are in New York, uh, in New York City for the most part, we have uh, pulled out this group and we are, we are organizing them uh, in their own uh, space so that they can communicate together, uh, working on this, this younger group uh, of millennials and this, uh, this, this, uh, this 22 to, uh, to 30 year old group in their, own, in their own groups so they can constantly be in communication so that we're not missing a beat because what we're talking about is major change and major change requires complete uh, communication uh, without missing a beat. In order to do that, we feel that we need to restructure and reorganize uh, for away from the traditional structure to accomplish this, to focus on uh, this young consumer. So those are, you know, those, those are those are complicated things to, to to do in a in a in a big organization like ourselves. But you know, we've, we're we're used to change. We've made so many significant changes uh, in the last five years inside of our of our company. Uh, it is a very different company today than it was in 2006. Uh, and, uh, and seeing the, the, the progress that we're making gives us encouragement to continue to, uh, to make these changes and to, and to move forward. So that's a snapshot of, uh, of, our, our, of our overview of how we plan to capture uh, more and more market share from this uh, millennial uh, consumer. Uh, you're going to hear more and more uh, about what we're doing. Obviously, uh, this is our beginning. And there's, we're not going to stop here. We're going to continue to evolve and continue to work to get closer and closer to this, uh, to this customer. And there'll be more, uh, more of, uh, evolution uh, in terms of how, our, 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 how we are responding to this opportunity. Uh, and then lastly, I'll say that uh, this also, this millennial group, is the future talent of our industry. And this is an important reason uh, why we have this conference here, uh, and it is affiliated with our, our retail center at the University of Arizona, um, because our goal is to create the best and brightest talent for all of everybody in this room and the broader uh, industry of uh, the, the fashion industry, the media industry, uh, the wholesale, the retail, uh, the, the, uh, the, the research industry, the consulting industry, that everything that has to do with selling products to consumer, we intend to train the best and the brightest students to, to, to be the ones that you want to you, you hire and you want to attract. In our own case, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we, we've become the largest recruiter on, on campus. We've hired 32 uh, people just this year uh, from the University of Arizona, a uh, combination of the retailing pro program in the business school, the Eller, Eller, Eller College, and we're very proud of that. And obviously, we're doing that for one reason. We've got great young talent in this, in, in this school, in this university, and I would just encourage you to do the same thing, is to have a look, to get engaged with the center, and to do the same thing. And by the way, if you think we can do a better job, tell us how to do that too, because our goal is the same. We want to populate our industry with the best and the brightest uh, uh, students, uh, because they, in fact, uh, will be the future leaders of our company and consumers uh, as well. So with that, I'll end it and say thanks for listening.
Thank you. I, I think we have just a couple of minutes for, uh, uh, for some questions. So I'll take them if you've got them. I'm sure there's microphones um, around and available for anybody who might have a question. I can't see very well, so you're going to have to uh, wave your arm or something like that if you have one. See one over here? Microphone to the center. They just can't get to you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Susan, I'm with REI, and could you expand a bit more on how you're successfully doing localized assortments? What's the role of the 18 people out in the 69 cities? Yeah, the, the, the role of the 18 people in the, on the district teams in 69 cities around the, the country is, is, first of all, we, we had the luxury of, of being able to populate these, these positions with people who had the experience. So they were former, many of them, most of them, former buyers, former planning executives. So we have, um, a pair, a planning executive, and a, and a, and a former uh, uh, a merchant uh, who are side by side working for women's apparel. We have another pair working on men's apparel. We have another pair group working on center core and, and so on. And their job is to, the, 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 the merchant is involved with communicating with the sales, the best sales associates and the department managers to learn exactly what it is that consumers are coming in for and that we're not satisfying or that we just simply need to do, uh, expand and, and, and uh, intensify things that are, are working. The planning executives quantifies that, tries to say, in order to make the statement for this particular store in the Tucson Mall, I'm going to need you know, six dozen of this particular item in, uh, in, this, in this color pattern for my customer. And that gets communicated through the technology that we've developed into the central organization, and that's what gets ex executed. And then you've got to have a positive response on the other end, and so we've just simply made it uh, a rule that says, when in doubt, just say yes. When in doubt, just say yes. And that's just become a philosophy in our company because what I keep saying is that we can't possibly know, living in New York City, which is where I live, what the customer in Tucson wants. We can't. Well, there's no possible way. We have 800 stores. There's no way that we, we can fully understand what that customer wants. So just say yes. And if they're wrong, they're going to eat the markdown in that store. And then, you know, they're going to be responsible. So you know once they get that merchandise in, they're going to work so hard to sell it. And, it. and so it really, really works for us that when we just say yes, almost always it, it works. And so that's the sort of the magic sauce in the, in the formula. Yes. Hello, sorry, Ellie Deckel with Saban Brands. Uh, Macy's has been a pioneer in entertainment as well as retailing. And uh, we've had the pleasure of working with your entertainment group in the parade and some other initiatives. Um, I'm wondering how you look at the Macy's entertainment initiatives as a component to what you just described with the mom strategy. Well, that's a good question because we don't really talk that much about it, but you know, I, I was saying to, in a small group, uh, at dinner last night that, you know, I have, I've had over the years um, letters and emails and calls of people saying you should cancel the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in 2001 after 9-11. Uh, I, I, had, I had hundreds, not thousands, but hundreds of contacts to me to cancel the parade uh, at this time. Uh, and I had the same thing happen in 2008 when the recession hit after September 15th you know, the Lehman Brothers collapsed and Merrill Lynch was occupied, or taken over by Bank of America on the same day. I mean, I had tons of letters and emails and calls saying you should cancel the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And my response was, are you kidding? <laughs> we should make it bigger. We should give America a reason to celebrate. We should be, you know, we should be trying to help uplift the spirits of America. And if we canceled the parade, that would be the worst thing that we could, that would put everybody in a, a worse mood than they, than they were previously. So my response was, you got to be kidding me. Well, I want to figure out how to make it better, how to make it bigger, how to make it more of, co of connection to, uh, to America. So, so our, our, we, that's what we believe. I mean, I, and frankly, the selfish part of me says, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is the third most watched television program after the Academy Award, after the Super Bowl, and then the Academy Awards. So 55 million people are watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade for three hours. I got a three-hour Macy's commercial. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, 
Uh, and and so, so to me, it, selfishly, it's a, it's, a, it's a great marketing tool. And then, of course, the fireworks. We're very proud of our fireworks, uh, the Macy's Fourth of July fireworks display. It's the largest fireworks display on, you know, in, in, uh, in the world on an on a annual basis. We have uh, the flower show that we do. We do a number of big fashion shows, and we do them big. Uh, and and for, for all those reasons, you know, we believe that that connects the dots to the community uh, and, and endears the, the brand. I'm told that I'm out of time, so I'm going to leave you with that thought and say thanks very much for all your support for uh, the University of Arizona and our conference. <laughs>